Okay, here we are in chapter three, linear regression, um, which is obviously an important thing when you study statistics. So we're going to show you um, some of the tools for doing linear regression. And importantly, we're going to show you some new tools that Jonathan's developed specifically for this book um, and for the ISLP package that make specifying linear models much easier. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, so um, as uh, we'll see in most labs, um, we talk, and we talked a bit about this in the first lab, whenever you want to use code in Python, you have to find it somewhere. And that's, the imp that's done with an import statement. Now, import statements can be put anywhere in the code, but sort of good practice is to put them all at the beginning. Um, so we've seen a few libraries in our last lab. Uh, we're going to import some of those same objects. And there's a new library that fits linear regression as well as logistic regression, which we'll see in chapter four. That's the stats models package. That is a sort of package for fitting regression models in R. OK. And as Trevor mentioned, one of the things we did for these labs was try to recreate, uh, try to create a way to, to make specifying regression models um, easier. There are a few different ways to do this in Python, uh, but we chose to do something uh, specific that was a, we felt a little simpler, and that's this this model spec. So we'll see in a in a moment how we use this to build design matrices for the regression problem. And that's really besides fitting the model, uh, specifying the design matrix is one of the important ta deciding what columns you want to use, what what effects, what interactions, etc. Okay, so let's jump right to um, linear regression. I better be careful and run these cells. So I have made the imports. Let's fit our first simple regression model uh, and see how this model specification works. We're going to use the, uh, the classic regression example, the Boston housing data. Um, and we use this load data function from the ISLP package. Most of the data sets we'll use besides for deep learning can be accessed with the load data function. It gives us a data frame um, and uh, with these columns. A description of the variables uh, can be found here or online as well. OK, so to fit a regression model, we need a design matrix. Here, let's make a design matrix by hand. We're going to have a column for an intercept and a column for LSTAT. This variable here is, stands for um, percent of the population of lower socioeconomic status. I'm not sure exactly how that's measured, but that's what the documentation each, tells us. Each observation is a census tract in, in Boston? Oh, that's right. The, yeah. the response here is MEDV, which stands for median value. And that's the uh, the median value of a house of, of a house in that particular census district. Yeah. Okay. So the way we fit these models is given a response in a design matrix. We're going to use this OLS method from the stats models package, which is an ordinary least squares models. We'll fit it um, with the fit method, and we'll take a look at uh, you know the usual summary of a regression model that has coefficient estimates and estimates of the standard error. Of course, the, the t statistic is the ratio of these two, and this is the you know the p values here are tiny, so there you know there is some association between uh, apparent association between LSTAT um, and, and median value. And by the way, summarize is an, one of the nice functions written for the ISLP package, um, which gives a, a nice compact summary compared to the default summary, which is rather big and ugly. Yes, yeah, so you can see the default summary below, but we won't um, we won't dwell on it. OK, so um, we're going to have to create more design matrices and more complicated design matrices. So we use, we're going to use this thing called model spec or models for model specification. And it uses this sort of paradigm we'll see later that is a transformer for, from the scikit-learn package. So um, these transformers, they, you can think of them as ways to, um, uh, to process features or sort of feature engineering kits. You'll, um, you'll notice in the text we use the word model matrix and design matrix interchangeably. Yes. Um, and so the, these transformers, they have these two methods, fit and transform, um, that are used throughout uh, whenever you see a transformer. And this is our, our first example of one. We'll see later when we do principal components analysis that it is another example of a transform. I just, I just want to say something here, and that is that if you a lot of time is often spent in building up these model matrices to do regression, and it's tedious. And especially when you make transformations of variables and you have interactions and things like that, you can spend a lot of time just getting set up to do the regression. 
And Jonathan's created these tools that make it much easier to do, as you'll see, and especially as the examples get more complicated. Yes, yeah. Uh, and another key thing, of course, is if you were just to make these design matrices by hand, sort of keeping track of what the columns are and how they relate to everything yeah. else is kind of is, is important. Being able to manipulate them is useful. Like you might want to, you know, drop one of the terms of the matrix of, of, of a regression model, yeah. and being able to do that. That's a, those are some of the capabilities of this this model spec. Yeah. But we won't touch on that today, of course. Okay, so let's jump right in. We want to fit a regression with only a single feature, so we the way we specify the features in the simplest case is just a list of column names. Um, and uh, we, use the f we apply the fit method to the Boston data frame. And what this will do is essentially just check that there is an LSTAT column in the Boston data frame and recognize it that it's a, that it's a float. And so when it creates a design matrix, it'll just extract that column and add that to the matrix. If we had more columns, we would, um, you know, it would have more columns to the design, design matrix. We'll see that shortly. OK, so doing this, uh, when we want to actually construct the, the design matrix or the model matrix, we call the transform method um, on a data frame, Boston in this case. And this constructs um, the actual design matrix or, or model matrix. And notice by default, it put in an intercept column, which is something if you did it manually, you'd have to do yourself. Just by default, it just put in the intercept column, which is usually what you want. Yes, that's a good point. Um, you can turn it. There's an option. You, if you don't want it, you can get. You can yeah. ha not have it. But most of the time, we want an intercept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So I just one small comment about this. If you look at when I constructed this, this model specification doesn't know anything about the Boston data, right? It just has the name of the column. It's this part here that the when we call the fit method on Boston, it inspects the Boston data and recognizes there actually is a column called LSTAT and then knows what to do with it when we call transform. OK. So uh, moving on, um, let's go on to uh, the next topic, which will be multiple, uh, which, which will be confidence intervals and prediction at new points. Um, so you know, as commonly, we'll have a, another, maybe some other census districts that weren't included in the fit or maybe if we think of this model relating median value to LSTAT is applicable to other areas, we might go to you know, Philadelphia and find the percent low LSTAT in those census districts and try to predict there. So um, that's what we'll do now. So to do that, we need to provide the transform method, a data frame that has all the, the necessary variables. In this case, it just needs to have LSTAT. And this transform will create the design, these rows of the design matrix corresponding to these values of LSTAT. I see. So the, the design object that you created knows how to set up the design matrix, and you've just given it a new data frame, and, and it uses the recipe you set up to do that. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you, for more complicated uh, designs, it's a, you know, it will produce the design matrix in exactly the same way as it did for the original data when you fit the model. Um, that'll be important when some of the transformations mm. get complicated, uh, um, like for for principal components or or polynomial regression, for instance. Okay, so n and to actually get confidence intervals or new predictions, that we rely on the stats models. So this get prediction method gives us um, th fitted values for the uh, at the new points. Uh, so those are the would be centers of our confidence intervals, and from the new predictions method, we can similarly get confidence intervals. Oh, wonderful. So that's simple linear regression. And the next section we'll deal with is multiple linear regression.